It's another Thursday workday in this Los Angeles urban garden, and I've got a lot to share, so stick around. Eric and I have just rounded up what may be my last big harvest of the summer. We have brown turkey figs, I'll have a lot more of those, lemons and oranges, of course, and my second and probably last big harvest of peppers. Beautiful. Wow. And what may be my last tomato harvest. That's pretty much it. I'll have quite a few more passion fruit. Of course, here's the Pantelleria pepper from the island off of Sicily. The healthiest peppers I have are the two plants from Pantelleria. Look at that. Nice dark green leaves. These peppers grow up like candles, very pointy and very hot. And this is my second year with this plant. I picked up the seeds when I was in Pantelleria. Sicily in 2016. I have the Piquin peppers from Arizona. I love these little peppers. They come right off the plant. You just pull them when they're ripe, they come right off. And I have two of my favorite peppers, Orange Thai. That plant is still hanging on if you've been following my Orange Thai pepper saga. I have my first harvest of goji berries. I've got just about a cup here. I'm going to eat every one of these fresh. No wasting mm, of a single millimeter <laughs> of juice by drying them. You know I was in Minnesota last weekend visiting my son Walker and attending the Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed Regenerative Renegades event celebrating their 15th year in business and also to bring together producers and enlighten people about the benefits of lifetime grazing of ruminants, which are cattle, sheep, you know. So be sure and watch my video from Minnesota. And I wanted to give a shout out, you know, I love to shout out to my fans. This is from Dee Dee and Dee Dee says, I've never commented on your videos before, but I've been watching you since I was 11. I'm 15 now and I still absolutely love your videos. I've been re-watching some earlier episodes of Late Bloomer and can't help but ask if you still have the recipe for German potato salad you made in season two. Best wishes from New York. Oh, I have something so exciting. And this is from Janice Diaz. And she's writing to me from Goa, Goa, India. This comes from True Taste of Indian Teas. And this is Mapusa Margeo Vasco. Okay, this is a bottle of something. Oh my, and it looks like another gorgeous color of Kurti. Oh yes, wow. All I can say is I must be a lot bigger than the average Indian woman because this is an extra, extra large and I am just going to fit into that. I think I dropped something. There is no note, but I'm sure these are seeds. I just don't know what kind. Let's see. <laughs> these are okra seeds and they are, I would bet, green okra. So I just dropped one. <laughs> Where'd it go? I just had a visual on that seed. Hold on. Got it. Okay. Those are okra seeds. I wanted to give you an update on the capers. They haven't exactly transitioned well to my garden and they've got the sunniest spot and I've given them plenty of water. So, oh, my cannas are blooming. The first time I've had cannas and I got the plants from Sharon's Natural Gardens in Delaware last year. And between the cardamom plants and the cannas, which have to be in a similar kind of family because those leaves grow like in the same way and they unfurl in the same way, those are doing fantastically. We are 
doing major cleanup this morning. In fact, that's what Eric is busy doing while I'm talking to you. We don't really have a lot of big projects since I was gone last weekend. There's a lot of dead leaves, a lot of cleanup to do. I forgot the eggplant. Ah, and my hummingbird is <laughs> buzzing me overhead. And we're gonna get started with work and I'll show you a little bit of the garden. some beans growing up the pineapple guava. It's interesting that this group of zinnias is the only group that does not covered with mildew. Maybe it's just getting more sun. I can't imagine any other difference. Oh, there's a replacement tomato right there. And it's not getting any sun, so it's not doing well. But this one, that I allowed to go up high is huge. And I do see blooms, but I don't see any tomatoes. Look at the Jerusalem artichokes. Okay, get a load of this stunner. I love my honeybees. Borge is gorgeous. would a garden be without flowers? I don't know what happened to my sage. I think maybe I should just go ahead and cut it and let it dry and see if it comes back but it all shriveled up while I was gone. This is the white sage that you make smudge sticks out of. It smells so good. And look at these gems. There's two together right there. It's the end of August and tomatoes and peppers are pretty much done, but I have corn. <laughs> Read my blog post about planting corn late in the season. It's called Improvisation in Urban Gardening and you'll find the link right up there. Today is all about cleanup. We're just trying to maintain what we've got and we're spraying again with hydrogen peroxide on the mildew and next week will be the week where we X a lot of things out. Banana go in the in the plant, uh, at the, you know, it's a, this is good potassium, no? Right. You know? Right. Put it in the passion fruit. Right. 50 50. Okay, that sounds great. And then we can keep it green, all the leaves. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. That sounds great. So Eric had some overripe bananas and he is going to use some at the base of both of the passion fruit vines. So we're just giving a little treatment to the goji berries and the passion fruit and the aronia berry, which has never grown at all. Just no sun. So we're just giving them some eggshells and coffee grounds and banana. As you can see, the goji berries are bare. There are a few more berries coming and a few more flowers, but I think that was the big, the big rush. So this is what's eating the leaves. I'm gonna let some of these tomatoes grow.
checking on the celery that we planted three weeks ago. Some of them look okay. Not that one. We have sprouted a couple of pieces of the sugar cane. So Eric is cleaning out this area where we planted the jasmine vine. And that's it way up there. It doesn't cover up any of this ugly, dead looking tree, which was my goal. We could plant the sugar cane here and then in a year it would be tall and beautiful like that. No, no, I'll show you what I want. Can you dump that out and let me show you what I have in mind? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> four, five, four. See, it's beautiful. Huh? And there's the other one. That's only got one. Only one. That's okay. That's okay. It'll have more. Just like that. That's what I was thinking. Right in the middle of that. CSMB. It'll, it's it's going to fill the whole thing up when anyway. it's big anyway. It'll fill the whole thing up. Yeah. Sugar cane is planted. Nice. Very nice. We are going to make some comfrey compost tea. But first we have to let the comfrey break down. So Eric is going to be taking off a lot of comfrey leaves because I have plenty and breaking them into pieces and then put a lid on it and see what happens. Well, hi there. I have to introduce my new neighbor. This is Zachary's new sister. This is Sevilla. She just came yesterday. This is Yolanda who's taking, well, she was just taking care of Zachary. I know. And now we have Sevilla. She just made her late bloomer debut and didn't even know it. <laughs> you don't have to yeah, but I need more. have surgical precision. Maybe it'll break down faster if you do. So I was just watching Old Alabama Gardener's channel because he has several videos, a whole playlist on comfrey. I want to make some compost tea concentrate. So I'm following his directions. There's nothing left. Find it. A caterpillar. See? I do see. Caterpillar. I can't believe they're doing that much damage. See, they're more, baby. But they are. There's more than one thing eating my comfrey. Shove it down in there, just mash it. That's the way Charles did it. He had a two by two and I only have a one by one. <laughs> That's good. It's heavy. My goodness, that is heavy. Oh yeah, it's compact. Okay, we're gonna cover that up. No uh, water? No water. Oh, remember, con water it smells terrible. <laughs> it's going to smell it terrible. It's terrible yeah. in two weeks, couple of weeks. Yeah, well, we're gonna leave it longer than that. We're gonna leave it like two months. It's very, very healthy. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great for the plants. Just remember that. <laughs> Not for me, for the plants. Yeah. <laughs> this is the dwarf red okra, and it was the only one, so I cut it, even though it's tiny. Mmm. Why did we ever start cooking okra when it's such a perfect raw vegetable? Gosh, I hate to beg, but please watch my Kentucky series. I met so many wonderful, warm, and engaging, and energetic gardeners and educators in Kentucky. You're gonna learn so much from that series. I kind of apologize about all these longer videos that I've been making lately. I try to keep my videos more towards around 10 minutes, so it doesn't take up too much time of your day. But there's been so much great content lately that the videos have been longer. And don't forget to let the ads play. That's how we content creators make a few pennies if you don't skip the ads. Thanks so much for watching and take it away Kay. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll enjoy these. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.